Hey guys, I wanted to kind of show you a step-by-step -step process of how I achieved this look here that I'm calling Baja Kisses and how I can achieve the exact same look on the side of the armoire. So I have laid down my base coat of Carnival Red. I actually mixed a little bit of a really bright pigment, um, not really mica, but it's a powder pigment. So it would be even more intense. I use all DIY, it's a clay-based paint. Then I also added in our fire starter, which is our bright orange. So I added them on my brush, half and half, and lightly misted the piece of furniture and then applied the paint in a thin coat. So now I'm just going to apply a second coat. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna start bringing in my wonderful turquoise shades. I'm gonna use Old 57 today, Mermaid Tail, and then my deeper color is gonna be my favorite, Bohemian Blue. All right, we have the second coat of our base layer on. And the thing is, I really want this red and orange to show through. As you can see here, um, we will be adding in some yellow also and this yummy gold. Uh, but for now, we need to start layering our blue. Now the key to layering the blue colors and not covering up all of the red, there's many ways that you can do it, but this is how I tried it. This was my really first experience with the Caddy. I've used it on my canvases for artwork before. But what I love about this is my Pink Pixie. The four inch bristles allows it to be such a soft touch. So when you are doing this, it's very, very soft and it doesn't cover up the original finish completely and it allows that. So uh, this was the first time I had tried it gave it a really good texture as well. So I have my mint chip and my mermaid tail poured right here together. And I'm just going to lightly mist, not where it's dripping, but just a little bit of a mist. I'm gonna take this and tap on my palette. And I'm overlapping my colors. Okay, going back and forth rocking back and forth. And then I'm going to unload my brush back on my palette. Okay, I'm gonna unload it. So you can see. Okay, now I'm going to very delicately brush. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep doing that over the entire side. I just, that's the thing. I can keep going until I get as much or as little as I want. I can spray it. If I wanna move the paint a little bit more, well, a little bit easier, I can add the paint. But also if I get too much paint on there and I wanna thin it out a little bit, I just spray a little water on it. So I'm gonna tap, tap, tap. Now, Granted, you can tell by looking at the front of this piece, it doesn't have these really strict variations because I've gone back over it multiple times. I've added in my yellow, I've added in my bohemian blue, and now I'm going to just coat this entire side with a very sheer layer using this fantastic caddy brush. Now, while this section is drying, I'm gonna go grab a tool that's make you gonna go, what, why? Stay tuned, it'll be a fun one. I'm using an old discarded sanding sponge and I'm gonna dip it into the Bohemian Blue and I am going to drive it into the paint. So, yep. I'm pulling some paint off underneath as I'm applying it here. If you don't like the way that it looks, grab some water. I'm going to reverse it and go back up. Now, the sides are going to be a little bit more difficult because they don't have as much 
the beauty and the trim and all of the wonderful things there. So the side's going to look a little bit different. So I'm just gonna pull some of the Bohemian Blue around and then uh, if, you, if, you, if it's too jagged, I might just either use my finger, blend it all in together, or I'll grab a little paintbrush and mix it all in just a little bit. But for now, I'm really just intentionally creating texture and I am going to apply it with this. So I've not added any water. This is the first time I have done it like this with a sanding sponge, but I thoroughly enjoyed the look that I got on the front of this and knew, yep, we are gonna do a tutorial because somebody else should try to do this as well. Now with this being a clay based paint, it works really well to be able to layer it like this. It's almost like the more you add, the better the layers. It's really good. Uh, but if this is not, like we are gonna add yellow, we're gonna add uh, black wax. So right now it's very spotty looking and that's not what I plan on it continuing to look like. Like I said, I want it to look like the front of this piece. So we're gonna spend a little time on this section. I'm gonna repeat this process over and over. I'm gonna keep pressing my sponge into the paint and rubbing it into the other colors, pulling some paint back and read it, letting this happen organically without me trying. I don't really have an end look other than something similar to the front. I don't need it to look exactly like this can take on its own look because it's on the side. I can add that there along the edges. If I want to, I can spray it. It looks, it's very splotty, but splotchy, I should say. It's not gonna stay that way. It's wet. Now I painted this piece, there's just the front. I painted this five different times online. So it's a process for sure. It's gotta be treated that way. Don't think that every time you walk away from a furniture makeover, you're gonna have the desired look. You certainly are gonna have the finished look. It's gonna take a little bit to build it up. I definitely want some of that red and orange to be coming through, so I am intentionally not covering it all up. If you feel like, oh, I don't really like that, then just take your caddy or whatever brush you're using. This is just what I'm going to take. I'm gonna blot, 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 so it's on my tips, and I'm just gonna pull some of that color down, have it heavier in areas. like dry brushing it's got such a soft bristle very light hand I mean I'm just kind of flicking my wrist and the more texture the better I want this to look as if it were painted a hundred years ago not today
Now you know I'm gonna have to add in some contrast. You can see all this delicious yellow. We gotta get some in here. So I've watered down a mixture of acrylic and I have used hand sap. I haven't used this color before. It's my first time using this one. And then I mixed it with my Queen Bee, which is also DIY paint. So I didn't want it Queen Bee, but I also didn't want it too bright. So I just mixed them and I mixed them in a bowl of water. I'm using my little Frenchie from Paint Pixie. And I'm just going to hit a few areas at random. I don't mind the drips. We're gonna end up spraying it here in just a second. I'm gonna let it sit just a second and then I'm gonna spray it, okay? And then we will add in some golden ticket and some black wax for our finishing touches. Spray it just to get it moving a little bit so it doesn't look as though it were intentionally placed there, but it's just kind of rubbed in. Get random. And I'm gonna sit for a second and let it drip. And we'll spray it again. And then we have to wait again. Right now it's really bright, but don't worry. We're gonna bring it down a notch. And if you find that you got your yellow too bright, don't worry about, um, bringing another blue back over it. Get your Bohemian Blue back out, get a soft bristled brush and lightly dust back over it so you just keep building those layers upon color and it's just gonna become more and more unique the more you add anyway. So the yellow has dried and I'm so thrilled anytime I take the opportunity to add gold. Just add the gold, just add the gold. Now I don't have any beautiful details like the front of it. The front had this textured uh, panel inside each cabinet door and drawer. So I don't really have that over here, but I still want to hit everywhere where I hit the yellow. I still want to hit it with, um, I'm going to hit with my fan brush and I'm going to do a very, very light coat over the yellow. Okay. So I just have a little bit on here and I'm going to lightly dust. Now this is a liquid patina from DIY. It's already watered down. It's a very thin coat, but boy, that does not take away from the actual gold that it provides. It's very subtle, but I wanna make sure that I wrap that shiny texture around. And so I'm just gonna lightly sweep over the yellow. And that's it. Once this dries, which will literally take maybe 10 minutes, we're going to put some black wax and then I will give it 24 hours for the wax to dry. And you can give it longer than that if you like. But then I'm gonna take my buff brush from Paint Pixie and I'm gonna buff and shine and do da Ready for her photographs. So I'm gonna keep doing this gold just a little bit. Add as little or as much as you want. Now you may think this piece is so worn, why would you want a little bit of shimmer? Well, guess what? It's custom, it's whatever you want it to be, and I wanna encourage you to create your own furniture makeovers. Create your own style. Don't follow the rules. What rules are we even referring to, right? Why would there be rules in art? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna give this 10 minutes and get my wax brush ready. I have one for each color, black, white, clear, or colored waxes. So the key to adding colored waxes is just to not overload your brush. So I always keep a rag handy. 
And once I load my brush, which I'm gonna use my Lil C from Paint Pixie, I'm gonna dab in my jar of DIY black wax. And why black instead of brown? I don't like brown. I feel like brown, well, I just don't. I don't wanna say anything. I just don't care for the browns like I love the black, okay? So I am just gonna put it on here and then I'm gonna blot several times so there are no chunky wax blobs on my brush. And I'm gonna start really slowly over the gold and the yellow. And since I see, I can have a reference point because right here I can see what I had done. And so I'm just gonna wrap that same design across. And I'm very lightly, guys, I have so little black wax on here. I'm very lightly because I can always press harder or put a second coat on if I want to go further or darker with that. And now I'm just gonna start adding that texture. Yes, it's so good, so good. Let me make sure you can see the bottom part. A little bit, a little bit. Then blot. Looks like nothing's on here, but it's black. It's on there. the photos as reference. I'm going to cover this entire side with a very sheer coat of black wax. Then I'll wipe it back in case there's any extra residue that really doesn't need to be there and then I will buff tomorrow. And keep going. So that's it. I carried Baja Kisses around the corner, but I wanted to save this little section on this side just for the subscribers to the Turquoise Iris Journal. I want to thank you so much. Um, I hope you're learning something, but rather than it being, oh my goodness, I'm going to do it exactly like her, I hope that it is kind of sparking this curiosity of maybe I could create something similar and of course you can of course you can thank you and I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed painting it with you today